31. Welcome to the last section of chapter two, which again is still our review chapter. And this time we're gonna take a look at linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities. And I had mentioned in 2.6, we picked up the absolute value equations. Now we're gonna look at the inequality version. So we're gonna solve linear inequalities and then we're gonna solve absolute value inequalities. All right, so if you hear me say linear inequality, a linear inequality in one variable is an inequality that can be written in the form ax plus b is greater than zero, where a and b are real numbers, a isn't equal to zero, and any of the symbols greater than or equal to, less than, and less than or equal to may also be used. So for this box, I just happened to pick the greater than symbol, but you could pick any of these other three. And again, they have this stipulation that a doesn't equal zero because if a didn't equal zero, we would, or if, excuse me, if a did equal zero, we would just be looking at a number. All right, so with that, we're gonna review up how to solve linear inequalities. And it's very similar to how you would solve a linear equation. There's one catch and we'll talk about it in just a moment. All right, so I'm gonna scooch this up so that we can see everything here. All right, so let's say I gave you this inequality, right? So you see I have a less than symbol here. So I would still subtract seven from both sides, just like you would a regular equation, but I'm gonna get negative two X is less than negative 12. All right, and then you would say, hey, you know what, Miss A? I'm gonna divide by negative two. And here's that one catch that I, I wanna remind us about. So when you're dealing with linear inequalities and you're either multiplying, or in this case, dividing both sides of that inequality by a negative number, you have to remember to change the sign of the inequality. So what I mean by that is, yes, negative two X divided by negative two, those divide out and you get X. And yes, negative two, excuse me, negative 12 divided by negative two is positive six, but I need to change the direction of this inequality and make this greater than six. All right, so when you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to change the direction of that inequality. Now, I wanna extend upon this a bit. I think in your earlier algebra days, you might leave this as an answer, right? You just say, oh, well, x is greater than six. I wanna get us in the habit of set notation, so I'm gonna start introducing that in this chapter. As you move through math, we, we pretty much use, not set notation, excuse me, interval notation. Um, if you go higher up in math, they're gonna use set notation, but I wanna get us used to interval notation. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna make a graphical representation of this inequality, and then I wanna talk how we go from that graph to our interval. Or maybe you can get in the habit of just going from this inequality to the interval. All right, so let, let's talk about if I was going to graph this. So if I was gonna graph this on a number line, right, I would put six on the number line. Typically we would put an open dot because this isn't greater than or equal to, it's just greater than, so we don't want to include six on our graph. And because it's greater than, we would shade our number line all the way to the right. Okay. So you might refer to this as an inequality all right, this is the graph of that inequality. And what I wanna get us to is the, the interval notation. So instead of writing the inequality, I wanna get us to writing this, six to infinity. And I wanna talk about where on earth did I come up with that? So I want you to think if you were gonna put your pencil on the number line for everything that I shaded, I started pretty close to six, and then I moved to the right. And these, these are the numbers seven, eight, a thousand, 10,000, a million, and it goes all the way over to positive infinity, okay? Now, there's gonna be a few options when you write your, your intervals, but the numbers are always low to high. That will always be the case. So when we go to interval notation, and that's what we're gonna be practicing in this section, when we go to interval notation, it's always gonna be low to high, and you will have options. You will either have brackets or parentheses. I'm gonna erase those because in this particular case we want two parentheses, and I wanna talk about why. But the numbers in your interval are always gonna be low to high, whatever you shaded along the x-axis. 
All right, now the reason we put the parentheses here and not the bracket is because we did not include six. So when you do not include something, when you have an open dot on your graph, you're gonna put a parenthesis around it. So that's why in this particular case, I had a parenthesis. Infinity. Infinity doesn't exist in the real world. It's, it's a symbol that represents an idea and you can never get to infinity. You could start now and keep counting and get numbers that are higher and higher and higher and you would literally never be able to stop. There is no num highest number. We just gave it this symbol, we called it positive infinity. So since we can't get to infinity, it will also have a parentheses. So when you see parentheses, that means do not include an answer. If you see a bracket, that means include it in your answer. And just as a note, infinity, or if we ever get there, negative infinity, always use parentheses. And we're gonna talk about this more throughout this section. I just wanna give you a preview. So again, if I look low to high for what I shaded, I went six to infinity. Infinities always get parentheses because I can never reach infinity. I can never include that number. And then six happens to get a parentheses because this was strictly a greater than symbol. If this had been greater than or equal to, I would have put a bracket here, okay? And just reviewing up some of your properties of inequalities before we move on to the next page, let's just remember this, right? So we have, if A, B, and C are real numbers, if A is less than B, then you can add a constant to both sides and keep that inequality in the same direction. You can multiply a positive constant on both sides and keep that direction of your inequality. But if you multiply a constant that is negative, right? If C is less than zero, then change the direction of the inequality. So I want you to see, right? It started less than, kept the less than. Less than, kept the less than. Less than, ah, uh, went to greater than because we had a negative number. So anytime you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to remember to change the direction of the inequality. All right, so with that, we're gonna to move to the next page. We're gonna solve a little bit more convoluted inequality, and we're gonna practice putting it into interval notation. I'll see you in a few, bye.